discuss Ruth Waters' art, and you oh. are a sculptor. I've right? been a sculptor for a long time. I'm a painter too, but that is more recent. All right, and uh, I just want to ask my camera, give me a signal when we start seeing her, her work <laughs> and her studio, okay? Mm -hmm. And how did you decide to be, well, here, well, here we are right now. All right. This is your studio. Mm -hmm. That's where the workbenches are. And I'm looking at wood. Mm -hmm. I have logs stashed everywhere because there's no seasoned log store. Logs come to me various ways. People call and say, oh, my neighbor's cutting a tree down. Do you want some? And sometimes logs arrive on my doorstep, and I don't know where they came from. But anyway, so I had them stashed under the workbenches, here they're near on. Well, that's some finished work. Some finished work. And I want to ask, mm -hmm. when you start a project, when you get an idea, mm -hmm. well, what do you, do you have an idea in the first place, or do you just start chopping away? Would you oh, tell us well, about the yes. mental process? <laughs> okay. Because it takes quite a while for a fresh cut log to be ready to carve, I live with it. And I'll spot the next one I want to work on. Generally, when I'm sanding on a piece, that's a great impetus to the imagination to think about what I'd rather be doing is carving. Sanding is not fun. So I'll be, be thinking about and looking at and saying, mm, and checking out the problem areas because there's always, you can see a bump, you know a branch broke off sometime 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and there'll be a problem inside. So I want to map out all the problems and begin to think about what could be inside there. So then eventually, maybe I'll do some sketching, but probably I'll get the chalk out and begin to kind of put a few lines here and there and see, hmm, nah. Rub them out and try something else. And it'll be a while in the design stage before what's in my head works well enough with what I've got because I can't carve what's not there. What might be in your head before you start sketching and chopping away? Well, I suppose that people in and of themselves and the relationships between people have been a recurring theme in my work for many, many years. I find, I find the dynamics of people very interesting. Dynamics between people. Mm -hmm. Like, can you give me an example? I've done several things which look pretty abstract, but they are representations, for instance, of different kinds of family relationships. I've done, an, I've done a series of three now that I call intimacy, intimacy one, two, and three. And they're, they're good-sized pieces. Two of them have already gone into bronze editions. And they are representations of a pretty much idealized pair bond relationship. And then I'll, I've got one that I'm working on now that's quite abstract, and it will be about reconnecting, where you've had a family relationship and part of uh, you know, one person has left and is now kind of reconnecting. So that probably is the driving force for me, is is the, the human condition. The human condition, um, that is very interesting. And, and I'll just paraphrase. I think I have it, though. <laughs> you are very concerned with the relationship between people. Yeah. And there are a plethora of relationships. Love, yes. hatred, I don't know. I don't deal with the hatred part. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard to deal with. It doesn't look good, does it? Well, I don't see any reason to encourage it. All right. And people respond. I put a great deal of, I guess you could call it, passion into my work. And to me, the ideal is if people can feel that and respond to it. You'd rather have them feel warm oh, and yes. love. Oh, yes. Because we need oh, yes. the more the better. OK, one other question about, two other questions about your work. So you, you get a log in, it sits there, it dries, you just get something out, and you <laughs> Is that how it is? or? Sort of. I, I do work with a mallet and chisel, and it is, you know, and I've got the muscles for it. And then you, you get it all carved, and then you start smoothing it. 
something called a sure form plane has been a godsend because it, it, it shaves off, shaves down to a smoother surface, and then I, then I start sanding. And one of the things you learn the hard way is that I like I like openings and, and you know the interplay of forms. Well, that means that there's space between elements of a design. Well, one thing you'll learn by the time you get to sanding the first one you do like that is don't cut a hole unless it's big enough to get your fingers in. <laughs> oh, because you can simple. sand it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and what happens if you cut something out over here and then you decide, well, it doesn't work with my design? One of the advantages of working in hardwoods, and I love these gorgeous, wonderful, really hard woods, is that the work goes slowly enough that you can see those pitfalls before they, and they don't happen. Right. And you don't get slivers, you don't get stuff breaking. Uh, it, it's too much work to bother with inferior wood and soft wood. All right. So it's, it's, it just goes slowly enough. Just want to take a break mm -hmm. for a moment. My guest is Ruth Waters. She founded the 1870 Art Center mm -hmm. in Belmont, California. And she's given all of us a road map to help us found similar organizations in any part of the United States. She also founded the Peninsula Art Museum. And at this moment, I want to start asking her some questions about how she did that one. <laughs> so how, 